The Portobello Film Festival is running in London until Sunday and describes itself as the UK's biggest independent film competition. It showcases the work of some of the most talented up-and-coming filmmakers and actors. The winner receives a cash prize, and joining us now are two hopefuls in this year's competition, Lana McIver and Mark One. Welcome. And also the man who won last year, Wade Bayliss. Welcome to the show. Uh, Wade, first. Um, you won last year yes. with your film Birds Fly South. That's right, great? yeah. Um, which we might even see a little clip of on that screen now. Um, how was it as a filmmaker? What, what impact did it make you to, um, to, to win that? What, the festival? I yeah. mean, it was fantastic. I mean, it, it, uh, it raises your profile as a filmmaker. Um, one thing, to, it's, it's one thing to, make, uh, to have an idea to make a film and then to make a film. It's also, it can take a little bit of time. But then there's the issue of getting it in front of people, you know, because it's, it's nothing if it sits at home in the drawer. So for, it to, to, for a festival like Portobello, which draws in a lot of people, it's fantastic to get it in front of eyes. And then you get uh, people, you know, telling you their feelings about it. You know, it's, it's good to share. That's what it's about. In, in and how's your career progressed since last year's victory? Skyrocketing, Luke. <laughs> Skyrocketing. Yes, I can't hold it down. Yeah, the phone hasn't stopped. No, but it does, it does you know, and also, if, if, for example, if you, if you were to win the Portobello Film Festival, um, that automatically gives you selection into BIFA, which is the British Independent Film Awards. At least they'll have a look at your film. So that's start, you know, then you start from there, the climbing, as I call it, the invisible ladder. <laughs> um, yeah. Lana, turn to you now. You uh, also uh, did very well last year, one of the finalists. You've got a new film uh, in this year's competition. Tell us about it. Um, yes, I do. It's called A Night Deity. Um, it's a love letter that was originally written for a friend but then transpired to be written for the City of London and it follows a young woman around the City of London. Um, and I assume, was it, was it a low budget? Was it, was it hard to make? <laughs> it was no budget. <laughs> it was very creatively made, yes, with a lot of friends and um, support from people and contacts that I had made during my time in film school. And I worked with a really talented composer and sound designer who just brought it to life. Uh, and what do you hope from this uh, fest? What do you hope entrance into the, into the Portobello Film Festival will do for you and your career? Well, I suppose it's just a great platform to showcase your film. It's such an open-minded film festival that you can come in with so many different ideas. And it's just a great place where people just sit there and watch other people's ideas with no judgment, just a completely open mind. And that's why I wanted to submit this film into the Portobello Film Festival. Um, and turning to you, Mark, you have two, two films yes. in this year's competition, including yes. one about the graffiti artist Ben Einer, yes. uh, who I believe um, the Camerons gave a, a copy of the, his picture to, the, to President Obama. Correct, um, yes. What made you want to, to make this film, and then what made you want to enter into the uh, Portobello Film Competition? Well, the, the film was... Um, I, we got, I got a phone call from a friend of mine who I've worked with. Um, I do a lot of anti-violence work in schools um, with youngsters and try and turn them away from the negative life to positive. And I got a phone call. Actually, the true story is I was in my studio doing lots of commercial work. I looked up to this guy and said, divine intervention, give me something worthwhile doing. I got an email and it said, do you want to go and film Ben doing a new piece of wall art? And I said, what is it for? And he it said, it's to commemorate the loss of my son, Tom Easton, who died footsteps away from where the other one was done. So at that point there, I said, thank you, God. <laughs> and we um, set about the production of doing it. And as it was an art-based film and Paul Tabella support art films, for me it was a kind of no-brainer. Um, so it, whether it wins or not is kind of irrelevant. It was more to get people to see the film, to see the beauty of Ben's craft, and to kind of know a little bit about Tom Easton who lost his life. What's the film called? It's called Changing Change. Um, the original title um, was something else, but while Tom's mother, who, does, who narrates the film, um, she said Changing Change, which the original wall art was called Change. So it made sense to call it Changing Change. There's a hidden meaning in there that we'd all want change, but it's nice to have change that's changing, all that kind of stuff. Um, when the, uh, the festival was launched, it said that the British film industry was sort of in a moribund state. That's its, it, what it says. Uh, as young, up-and-coming filmmakers, how do you feel the British film industry is now? Well, there are some fantastic films being made um, uh, all, all around the place. But what, the, what festivals like these that uh, sort of are at the vanguard of showing independent film is they show what's really going on in people's lives, and they deal with subjects that are close to people's hearts. 
and uh, the mainstream doesn't necessarily allow that to be shown, but the, 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 these festivals are fantastic for that. And, th uh, and through that, uh, other people, you know, may be... Uh, Get, may get interested to make films themselves, and you know it, it breeds a you know a whole new generation of filmmakers, and gives people support. Yeah. Um, and on a very basic level, Lana, you talked about making a film on no budget. Yeah. What does a thousand pounds mean to a young filmmaker today? <laughs> a lot, definitely, yes. But I think with having a budget, you, you sort of sometimes are not as creative as having no budget. And when you don't have a lot of money, you really start thinking out of the box. And as Wade was saying, sometimes a commercial sort of film doesn't allow you to do that. But the Portobello Film Festival really just hones into that, into how people have thought out of the box to create something that really means so much more than just your stereotypical kind of A, B, C, D, E, F, G kind of film that just goes from a very sort of basic narrative point, which is very entertaining, but it's so much more fun watching someone come up with a wacky idea using eight cameras and, and just thinking out of the box and, and having a great performance just being on there. It's just a really fantastic platform to explore creative ideas rather than basic. Uh Lana, Mark and Wade, thank you all very much for joining us. You can see some of those films at the Portobello Film Festival, which runs until Sunday. In case you missed the top of the show, we've been...